Anastasia Dedukhna, welcome. Uh, founder of Consciously Digital. You've just done your presentation here at the Swiss Innovation Day, talking about the impact that technology has um, and the digital environment that humans live with. I noticed in your brief that you said that you've chosen to not live with a smartphone. So you've removed the smartphone entirely from your life. How has no phone changed your life as well as the overall perception of society? Um, I lived for about a year, year and a half without any smartphone, um, then, uh, which was beautiful. Uh, then I got uh, one back as a spare device, uh, which means it lies in my chest of drawers. Um, it doesn't have a SIM card and I use it on two occasions when I'm traveling and I need uh, my ticket on it or uh, when I need to call a taxi. Right. There's a stat that basically we generally pick up our phones every four to ten minutes. What does that really mean in the future when it comes to the evolution of the human and technology and the merging of those two together. Some people say that the evolution of the human will be that we actually will end up with chips in our mind or in our brain. Um, some people say we'll have implants in, under our skin. How do you see it moving forward? There are already companies that offer, for example, to their employees to implant a chip. Right. And I think it's what we're seeing though, it's not just the physical presence of the device, it's becoming closer and closer. It's how much of our humanity, of our abilities, we are outsourcing to our devices. Because we already generally have outsourced our memories. Now what we're seeing is more and more decisions about our lives have been made by our devices. For example, we see that in terms of the dating, yeah, like lots of more and more people actually meet others online. Yeah. They think they're deciding who they're choosing, but actually we know that very often it's the algorithm yes, yes. that's deciding for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably the next big thing will be in the medicine, uh, when it won't be anymore our bodies that will be deciding what's good for us, uh, but it will be like special programs or little robots that will be running mm -hmm. through your body. Um, I cannot say whether it's good or bad, yeah, I think it's an individual choice and we will have to make this choice. Yeah. Final question, just bringing it back to hotels yeah. and travel. How would you envision technology providers today offering technology to hotels mm -hmm. and to travel companies mm -hmm. that would be, uh, let's say, consciously digital, that would enable the hotelier to offer their services but in a way that doesn't um, intrude mm -hmm. perhaps too much via digital? I think it's a, it's a great question. Um, it's, uh, well, there are two things. One is the question of the privacy, and we always say that the conscious digital approach to privacy is that you should enable people uh, to be able to manage your information, what kind of information is being stored, why is it being stored, what can they do with this information, and so on and so forth. Uh, and everything starting from booking or searching for the, for the hotel, uh, which is not a transparent area now at all. For example, if you look up something in Google, the first results that come up, you know, like when it says like book the hotel for tonight, it's actually sponsored results, but Google doesn't make it very explicit. Right. Um, then it's up to the hotels or destinations to actually decide what they want to offer uh, to people. Uh, some of them actually choosing to offer digital detox packages, uh, which can be anything from uh, offering particular experiences, for example, to reunite the families or helping with any offline experiences like getting lost in the desert, uh, obviously with our devices, learning some survival skills, um, to actually just uh, be able to lock your phone, I don't know, like in a specific box, and have some peace of mind. Yeah. Um, I think we should not be jumping, you know, like from one side to another and uh, too much technology is not good. Prohibiting people from using technology is not a good idea either. I think it's a question of choice yeah. um, and uh, if this is an option that hotels, for example, can give uh, people, we can know that they can appreciate that. For example, according to Ofcom report, um, about 30% of UK citizens, which is approximately thir uh, 13 million people, have undertaken some form of digital detox holiday. Mm. So there, this is actually a very big market. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which can be explored. Good. Anastasia, lovely to meet you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.